So here's my course that I've developed on Udemy on the Russian tortoise. You can see it right here. I'm out at udemy.com right now. I just happen to type in tortoise to find it. It's called How to Successfully Choose and Care for a Russian Tortoise. Nice little picture. This is my promo video you can watch. It's six and a half minutes long and it's got clips from the various sections and lessons. As you can see here, it's very much beginner level. It's an hour's worth of video. There's 20 different lectures. And I'm going to scroll down here and you can see what's all involved in this course. I'm going to skip all that. I call it curriculum. There's an introduction, basically, you know, who am I and why do I think you'll be an expert at the end of that. That's a free preview. You can watch this. and We'll come back and watch a section of these in a minute. And then what I've done is I've broken these up into sections. It's basically where does the Russian tortoise come from? How to choose the right one. The right indoor and outdoor Russian tortoise pens. You know, the Russian tortoise diet. How to hibernate your Russian tortoise. Health in your Russian tortoise. Breeding your Russian tortoise. Let me get rid of that. Um, then some bonus videos, care sheets, a pen building document, and some other extras. As you can see, what I've done in this course is distill it down to the absolute must basics to help you have a very healthy, long lived Russian tortoise. There's none of the fluff. You know, anytime there's a book, you always have to add more and more and more stuff because you can't have a 35 page book. Nobody would buy it. Well, I don't have to worry about that in videos. You can see some of these aren't all that long. But what I've done is for each section, I've done an introduction of basically what you'll learn in each section, and I've broken it down. Like in the case of the where does the Russian tourists come from, it's like, okay, their native environment, the Asian steppe. Two and a half minutes, pictures and videos, where they come from. The four levels of tortoise hus husbandry, very, very important. Three and a half minutes, and then how to choose one. You know, the difference between store-bought and captive bred, there are a lot of differences. Like I said, and this is how it's broken down all the way through. And what I'll do is let's do a, show a quick preview. Let's watch this one. You can see kind of how it works. Or is that annoying from Windows or what? <clears throat> you can see how this will basically work. A little intro. Click on here to play. Welcome to section one on how to successfully yeah. choose and care for a Russian tortoise. In this section, we'll be learning about the native environment of the Russian tortoise and how it sets the foundation for every lesson in this course. We'll be able to understand how the harsh environment they come from in the wild drives every aspect of their care. I'm going to stop this right now because when you actually watch the actual lessons, you'll see that there is a, <clears throat> it's full screen, absolute full screen. It's not that little tiny one that's there. <clears throat> and the nice thing about doing this out on Udemy for you is you can watch it, you download the Udemy app, you can watch it on your phone. Download the Udemy app for iPad, Galaxy, you can watch it on your PC any one that you want. And on top of that, for each of these lessons, I've added captions. So if you're in airports, busy, and for a lot of people, I guess I realize that it's not just in North America that the Russian tortoises are kept. For those people who can read English but don't necessarily understand spoken English that well, I've captioned all the different videos to help understand pieces and parts in there. There's also you know, there's a discussion forum. You get in here, you can write reviews, there's a more about the course. There's a discussion forum when you go in here where you can ask me questions. You can ask any other students questions, whatever you'd like to do. But that's basically the course. And I can, uh, we'll go through, I'm going to preview one lesson next. Okay, here's a couple of the previews that I promised you. The ones we're going to preview here, I'm going to play for here, are this first lecture on basically who I am. Because, you know, why should anybody bother to take a look at this course if the person presenting it doesn't know anything? So I'll kind of explain to you what I know about Russian tortoises, tortoises in general, and you get some background on me. The other one I'm going to do is one down here that I previewed. It's basically hibernation preparation for your Russian tortoise. Not a whole lot of people hibernate their Russian tortoises, and you don't have to. It's not mandatory. I think you should if they're in very good health, and I explain this part, these two, two sections why that's the case. So we're going to preview, preview this hibernation preparation one as well. So. Let's get started with those previews. Hi, and I want to welcome you to How to Successfully Choose and Care for a Russian Tortoise. Before I go into why I put this course together, let me tell you who I am and my experience not only with Russian tortoise, but tortoises in general. My name is Ernie Johnson, and I got started with tortoises back in the summer of 1971 when I purchased a female Berlandiers or Texas tortoise. 
And as you can tell by that date and my picture, I'm not a young buck. Now back then, having watched every nature show on TV, luckily for the tortoise, I determined feeding them cactus pads, grass, and weeds was what they needed to survive. And it was. She and the male I acquired two years later were doing very well nine years later when I gave them to a friend who also had Texas tortoises and was headed to Northern Arizona University for an advanced degree in herpetology, where I thought they'd have a better life. That first tortoise became Greeks, then Redfoots and Russians. And for the last 16 years, I focused on Russians, my very old male Greek tortoise, and a pair of captive red, now adult Redfoots. Now, the reason I put this tor course together was seeing for so many years on various tortoise forums, Yahoo Answers, and other sites, just how many basic questions people had on these tortoises and how many of the answers they got were wrong. Having spent my working life in information technology, where facts and logic rule the day, I thought it was time to distill all the facts and logic I'd used over the last 16 years with these Russian tortoises to help other owners get the right information. 16 years into the mission, my Russians are active, healthy, and only one, my very old male, had a minor health issue a few years ago. So I'll teach you exactly what I do and have done on a daily basis so your Russian can have robust health and live its natural lifespan. I go over pen requirements, their diet, hibernating them, their health, and breeding. You'll learn some science, some geology, where they come from in the wild, what not to do, <clears throat> and when you're done, you'll know more about caring for a Russian tortoise than 95% of the people who own one today. So you'll be as close to an expert on these tortoises as possible without going through the process of caring one for 16 years. Lastly, I want your feedback so I can improve the course and look forward to interacting with you in the discussion forum. I'll do my best to answer any questions you ask me with facts, not opinion. I really appreciate your investment in this course and will do whatever I can to help you have a healthy Russian tortoise you'll enjoy for many years, if not decades. Okay, let's talk about a somewhat controversial subject that shouldn't be, hibernating your Russian tortoise. Let me start by saying you do not have to hibernate your Russian tortoise. If it isn't in excellent health, you shouldn't even want to. If it is in excellent health, you should, as it's a natural process they all go through in the wild and their genetics are designed for it. Every wild-caught Russian tortoise starts to wind down the fall and does some period of restricted activity or bury themselves as best they can and sleep. Now for the 10 to 15 percent of you who will hibernate your tortoise, this and the next lesson will go over all the aspects you need to do and have in place to get them ready and through it successfully. First up is preparing for hibernation. The first step in preparing them for hibernation they do all on their own. You just need to complete their effort to ensure they're completely ready for their sleep. If you have a permanent pen outside, the natural reduction in light during the day as North America gets into September will start their natural slowdown processes. You just need to make sure to stop feeding them anything three weeks prior to them going into the refrigerator to ensure their GI tract is completely empty of food. Make sure they're well hydrated and drinking water two to three times per week. Soak them two times a week if you need to just to make sure they're hydrated. And once they start coming out of their burrow hiding place for, say, two or three days straight, they're ready for the fridge. Now, I've found using a small college dorm room refrigerator the best option for their hibernarium. You can completely control the temperature, see them when you open the door every other day to change the air in the fridge, and they last for years. Ours is 14 years old as I do this lesson, and it's worked like a charm every single year and has many more to go. And yesterday at Costco, we saw basically the same one for $150 so they're not exceedingly expensive. Now a week before your tortoise goes into the fridge, plug it in and set it so the internal temperature is between 40 and 45 degrees. That's pretty much the perfect range. And this may take two or three days to get set. Next, get a plastic shoe box you can see through that fits on a shelf in the fridge and fill it say three inches deep with dirt and then cover the dirt with some dried leaves or plastic plants and then put it in the fridge and let the fridge again stabilize at 40 to 45 degrees. Now it's ready. If the outdoor weather isn't working out too well, you know, too much rain, too cold, etc., or it's just easier for you to slow them down while they're in their indoor pen, here's what you need to do. 
You'll need to drop the amount of light in their pen from say the 12 to 14 hours you're doing right now, six, you know, seven days a week, to six to seven hours a day over a three week period. So one week, 12 hours. The next week, 10 hours. The next week, seven to eight hours. That will slow them down. Stop feeding them anything for this three week period as we did in step one. And then third, make sure that they drink water or soak them two to three times a week for 10 to 15 minutes each time to make sure that they're well hydrated. Okay, let's summarize what we learned in this lesson. You should hibernate your Russian tortoise, but only if it's healthy. It's not mandatory. They'll do okay if not hibernated. Use a small dorm room fridge as the hibernarium. Reduce their daylight time from 12 to 14 to 7 to 8 hours over a three-week period. Stop feeding them anything for the three-week period. And make sure they drink water or you soak them two to three times a week for 10 to 15 minutes each time. So now I've had a little preview of the course. Get an idea of what this is basically all about. So if you're thinking about getting a Russian tortoise, or if you already own one and aren't sure you're doing the right things for it, then this course is for you. And let's get started. You know, as you can see, I priced it so anyone, even a 13-year-old, because that's how old I was when I got started with tortoises, can afford it. You get lifetime access to the course and can ask questions and interact with me and others through the discussion forums. So, if having a healthy pet capable of outliving four or five dogs or cats is really unique, as well as interactive, is what you want, then I think this course for you, and I look forward to talking to you here in the course. Thank you.